Did you know that every January, the Philippines celebrates the Philippine Tropical Fabrics Month? Proclamation 313, signed in 2012, advances the use of Philippine Tropical Fabrics, or PTFs, made from the fibers of pineapple leaves, abaca, bamboo, and more. PTFs are not only environment-friendly, but also a source of livelihood for weavers, and it's also a platform to showcase our heritage. Recently, PTFs have been featured in the Laro ng Lai collection by designer Abel Bacudio, which Filipino athletes wore during the 33rd SEA Games in Thailand. Bacudio used the high premium textile for its feather light and resilient qualities. It's time to put the spotlight on sustainable initiatives one story at a time. Welcome to Sustainability. And returning to our set this evening is Dr. Julius Leano Jr., Director of the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Textile Research Institute or DOSTPTRI. That's a lot of uh, letters. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. Now, um, you know, I was surprised to find out that actually the contribution of uh, Text, the textile industry to greenhouse gas emissions is 8 to 10 yeah, percent higher terrible. Yes. than aviation yes. and maritime yes. industry of yes. 5.5 to 6. Yes, exactly. Talo pa ng tela. Talo. Including the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a huge contributor yeah. to greenhouse emissions. Yes. So tell us what you're doing to <laughs> mitigate, to lessen. To and lessen. I hope this will become, you know, a global off, mm -hmm. a, fil uh, a Philippine offering mm -hmm. to the globe. Yes. No? Exactly. So the, the materials used for all yeah. of these fabrics, especially, especially mainstream fabrics, has always been consumed a lot of water and has left a lot of carbon mm -hmm. footprint. So what we're trying to do is to substitute every single possible kilogram of material with something that we have locally and sana hindi na yung tinatanim and we don't have to cultivate it but actually rather already there so we're looking at agricultural byproducts mm. pineapple and banana in particular meaning crops that we already plant yes it's already oh. just there it's, it's mm. left in the farm after getting the high valued fruits for example which by the way we discovered that when you get the fibers actually the fibers have better value proposition than the fruit itself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you're hitting two birds at this mm -hmm. with, with, with one stone. So that's the value proposition, mm -hmm. that's the sustainability mm -hmm. proposition that we have for Philippine tropical fabrics and Philippine textile. Can yeah, you explain like how do you take out the fiber from the mga dahon and the waste? And, and the waste. that process, is it complicated and expensive? It's a straightforward process. Uh, it actually happens on the farms. So you don't have to transport the leaves because if you transport the leaves or the maybe the pseudo stem of like the, the trunk of the banana, you're tra technically transporting water. So what what we advocate is to do it on the farm itself. So mm -hmm. just you know immediately. Mm -hmm. So the process is simply just removing you know the it's the cortication. You remove the cortex of the fiber of the of the leaves. It's basically the covering, the green covering. So when you remove it, you liberate the fiber. Also for banana in particular, so mm -hmm. uh, it's also decortication, you're liberated as well. Abaca is quite different, but it's very similar. You still liberate the fibers, very similar the way you do it for banana. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's pulling it out and a very mechanical process. So the farmers can also the do it. The farmers this. can do it, yes. Uh, it's not energy intensive. The machines are very simple. It can be locally fabricated. It can even be brought into the middle of the farm. It can also be solar uh, powered. So all of these are innovations in order for us to liberate the fibers, you know, the much valued fibers from these agricultural byproducts. They will earn more money from this than from the <laughs> yes. actual fruit, like sage, yeah. yes. pinya, yeah. lang kasi, lalo na pag in season. Yes. Mm -hmm. The farm gate price, for example, of, of banana, maybe it, it has changed. It's like 13 pesos to 20 pesos per kilo. But the price price of a fiber that will come out from the farm is about 300 pesos per kilo. So it's a no-brainer. So mm -hmm. uh, farmers definitely can add it up, you know. Uh, of course, we still prefer the banana. It's still an export material. But mm -hmm. the fibers are emerging uh, uh, materials as well from the farm. Kahit yung Cavendish. Cavendish, Tababa, uh, Holland, etc. All the, we have screened about 19 varieties of banana. Mm -hmm. And they all give us exquisite fibers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You brought some as some samples. materials. Yeah, yeah, but how can we scale it up? Pa? Because right yeah. now, um, very how, limited. Yes. yes, very limited. Well, the num number one is the access to the farms. Uh, a lot of the farms are still small management, very, very remote. 
quite away, quite, quite far from the from the main uh, thoroughfares. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot of effort to bring them down. So the same problem of the abaca uh, industry is also the one plaguing, for example, the banana and the pineapple byproducts. It, it takes a lot of movement, and when you move. That's mm -hmm. another source of carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. we do is to locate. But when you locate, mm -hmm. you're out of the grid. You know, power mm -hmm. is a challenge. So mm -hmm. we try to transition at the same time to solar power and solar energy. So all of these are compounded. But definitely, yes, that's where science and technology come in. We have to scale it up. Otherwise, the prices would be very restrictive, yeah. very, very restrictive. And we'll talk about tons mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than talk about few kilograms. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm reaching out for you. Because it's beautiful. Tell us what so this, this is. This one is Philippine silk. Uh, of course, not, not a lot of us know that mm -hmm. we have silk in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. This one was, I think, reared and produced and woven in Misamis Oriental. That's the northern part of Mindanao. And so it's, are those from worms too? Yes, they okay. are. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were uh, dyed with uh, yellow ginger. That's why the vibrant yellow color. Okay. So Turmeric. it's antimicrobial mm -hmm. by itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, oh, nga, no? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, so, no molds, um, even. How specific? Aside from re the reduction of uh, our carbon footprint, paano pa nakaka-contribute ang tropical fibers to climate action? Well, it prepares our communities as well because as you transition, mm -hmm. you also transition not just in production but also in the sources of energy. Mm -hmm. So energy is also a huge contributor to the greenhouse mm -hmm. emissions of the textile industry. So that, that, that transition from fossil fuel base to mm -hmm. maybe solar is a huge, huge step. And I think uh, transitioning in industry doesn't only mean that you'll use it in the in the plants, but also use it in your community. So mm. that by itself is also very inclusive. So you don't want to put up a solar farm and only for the for the machines, yeah. right? You put it up for the community. So that's one huge uh, transition. So ilan ng well. Uh, we have definitely we have uh, those already plotted in 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 the Negros Island. Mm -hmm. uh, there are partners that we have there was a transition to solar powered, and we keep on we hopefully we keep on multiplying them and substitute the fossil fuel based uh, the corticating machines. So there's machines. only one. Or one two? company or one or, yeah two two units I think that's already deployed in the middle of the farm because you don't have power. I mean electricity there. That hopefully it will mm -hmm. get multiplied. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea there really is to demonstrate that it can be it's doable, many, and yeah. then scale it up. How many case studies or test cases, use cases, do you have around the Philippines now um, in the creation of these fibers? Well, the, uh, well de definitely it's as much as how many fibers do we have. So, like okay. I mentioned uh, earlier about banana, abaca, mm -hmm. bamboo was also included. The, the, the fabric over there is cotton Saluyot, and bamboo. Saluyot, diba you said? Saluyot is the one I'm wearing now. What? This is <laughs> Saluyot? Yes. You can see the brown color, right? Oh, wow, yeah. The Saluyot with silk. Can so, we close up on the... <laughs> <laughs> Pakita natin yung abs ni Doc. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so it, yeah, it can it can it can rival pineapple. So those are the propositions that we have. And again, Saluyot is not is not also as, as as massively cultivated. But the bottom line is you keep on discovering new fibers. Hyacinth is also another proposition. Let's say I'm a maker. I'm a designer. I want to order. Mm. Kaya ba? Mayroon Kaya, ba? yes. That's exactly, that's exactly why we are here now because we are a little bit more confident because you know the private sector mm. has taken it on. So maybe we're not yet talking about tons of fabric, but definitely in the order of thousands of fabric mm. can already be ordered. Pwede. Pwede na. Yeah, so I mean, if you're getting to a small scale, you know, prototyping sort of like uh, micro collection of sort, I think pwede naman na siya. Mm. And also... The yardage, the size, the diameter is the same as... It's 60 width. It's 60 okay. width, so like a blouse would only be just about 1.5, depending mm -hmm. on, of course, the, the cut. So that's, that's basically Kasi doable. Because dati yung mga small scale, iba-iba uh, yung size. Iba -iba. Uh -oh. So 60 is so, Six. minimum yan for the, the industry. Okay. And then uh, they could do it in, of course, different colors as you would want it to be. Mm -hmm. But still, the handle move, which are the ones you're, you're, had, uh, uh, you're using here? or yeah. seeing now, mm -hmm are still uh, heavily uh, done in the communities. That one, for example, is pure mm -hmm. cotton from uh, and dyed with indigo. Indigo is a, is a local mm -hmm. uh, plant as plant. well. Uh, it's in a blue shade. Yeah. Uh, so we did this with, I think this was done with uh, patnon in Antique. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's this What's this thread? That's, that's a, the blend of cotton and pineapple. Mm. Okay? So you mo makikita na yung pineapple, di ba? So that's exactly where the science comes. It, it, it looks like magic, but technically you cannot see where the cotton or the pineapple. But when you dye them, then you'll see the streaks now of the pineapple coming mm -hmm. out because as I mentioned earlier, uh, the absorption of the dyes would be very different. And that's beautiful. That's the it beauty is. of it. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. the, the imperfection, yeah. the naps, you know, things that like we normally ito, shy away. Like brown, brown. This one, you can see it here. This is bamboo. So you can see the bamboo fibers literally 
in the fabric. Yeah. Okay. Right? When you process um, the bamboo uh, fiber, walang damage to the environment, walang ano, I, I understand that sometimes the processing yeah. can be the, the, the bamboo heavy. processing, especially those that we know in of, the, the, is, is highly, uh, highly chemical based. Your... However, the one we're doing here is literally you can see the bamboo deconstructed. It's, it's just so it's not no chemicals are used. The, the chemical is only the base, and a base, of course, can always be uh, neutralized by simply mm -hmm. adding water. So uh, uh, it's 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 less hazardous, of course, than the regenerating the, the bamboo. So it's the same process that we use for a ba banana and abaca anyway. Okay. So mm. uh, it's less compromised. Mm. And yeah. it's not just clothes. Let me also highlight oh, this wow. issue yes. over here. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, we very, also work with, nice. yeah, we, we, it transitions it's because, nice. you know, textiles are also part of the wearables industry. Mm. Uh, so we transition as well. So Teka, what is this again? This is cotton and bamboo. 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 So, um, these methods, Doc, no? are they patented? Yes. Are they uniquely Can Filipino? Is it our invention? It, we patented it already. The, mm -hmm. the, the patents are in the blending of the yarn. So the, the composition of mm -hmm. three blends, meaning you have a base fabric, a base yarn, and then you have the, your natural fiber, and maybe a third yarn, which mm -hmm. you would have the elastics, etc. Okay. Those, that's already a patented mm -hmm. technology. But the cotton is imported? The cotton is locally produced. Ah, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have cotton production already in Ilocos region. We have in Panay. We have in Negros, we have in the middle of the of Mindanao, Salangani area, and even some Buanga. So, nagsisimula ang mag-rebounding mag yung ating mga farms. Tapos yan yung cotton na dati natin. Yes. That's it's our, endemic it's to en the Philippines. Yes, yes. That's the cotton that we used to, to plant. Mm -hmm. May incentives ba for the farms, farmers who might want to diversify into these other related businesses? Well, they are part of the bigger supply and value chain. So, mm -hmm. they can be accessed as well. So, in government procurement, for example, because mm -hmm. uniforms are for, for example, for government procurement, if you buy from a local manufacturer, they get some tax incentives or mm -hmm. holidays of sorts. It should be mandated. It is, it is part of, it's it part is. of policy. It's part of mm -hmm. policy. Yeah. Is this natural dye? No, not yet, uh. but this is pure cotton at the very least. <laughs> what about introducing or sharing it um, with the world? We with saw world. it in the SEA yeah. Games, right? Yung yeah. Pina Vel, yes. our athletes wearing it. Uh, also the design of Avel Bacudio. Um, but um, in terms of scaling it, also introducing it to the world, the, world, the yeah. beautiful fabrics that we have, what we, are some we keep on doing plans? it. Actually, we have engaged the Office of uh, Cultural Diplomacy of the DFA. It starts from creating awareness, you know, among when uh, within among the Filipino community. That's one, and then of course there's interest uh, through the foreign trade missions as well, mm -hmm. which we also do extensively with the Department of Trade and Industry. Mm -hmm. So all of these are part of the efforts in getting it out. Yes, there's a client base out there, uh, particularly in the Scandinavian countries. They, yes, they. they, they <laughs> not be so concerned about protruding fibers, you know, so yeah. it's a, that's our heaven. So if we be, even if we bring socks to them and they'll be protruding bamboo fibers, it would be okay. So different markets would, would definitely would uh, prefer it, especially those that are, are, are used and are exposed to wool, for example. Yeah. It behaves like wool. How much is the reduction in um, in uh, carbon? Carbon emission. Yeah. Every single kilo that we pluck out mm. from, the, from the, the, the yarn. For example, if you have a yarn that's, say, uh, uh, one kilo, one mm -hmm. kilogram of yarn of pure cotton mm -hmm. that's norm that normally would take about uh, 9,000 kilograms of carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. That's okay. about 20 kilograms, 20,000 liters of water. So every single gram that you pluck out from mm -hmm. it using pineapple, of course, it's not carbon mm -hmm. neutral, but at least it's lower than lower. the one with cotton. Mm -hmm. Do we have a target though? We have a target, but it's limited by the capacity of our machines. Mm -hmm. We cannot go too much, too high as far as substituting cotton with pineapple. However, there's a different route, which we are also pursuing mm -hmm. in the laboratories right now. Hopefully, it will be out by about two or three years. It's really regenerating it, but it's a more eco-friendly approach to producing 100% abaca yarns or 100% wow. pineapple yarns wow. and we can really authenticate that yes this 100%. is pineapple this is abaca no. yes well, hopefully doc, um, I'm afraid we're running out of time but tell us about some of your initiatives I know we're celebrating Philippine tropical, tropical fabrics, fabrics this month. month so what events do you have lined up well a lot of events uh, definitely this this month and we are culminating it on the 27th to the 29th at the Philippine International Convention Center this is our telecon or the National Textile Conference convention which actually gets together or puts together all of these efforts and all the stakeholders to talk about issues such as the carbon economy, mm -hmm. issues such as upcycling of textiles, even its impact to human security and defense. So all of these are uh, attendant issues to the textile industry which I think are crucial in pushing the agenda of the Philippine tropical fabrics, not just here but hopefully all over the world. Well, 
We thank you for this. It should be every month. Yeah. <laughs> All year round. Yeah. We thank you so thank you much, much for your time, DOST PTRI Director Julius Leanio.